this hour, word of God this hour. From the Father, the word of the power of God. So people are not necessarily bad the way we think, but people have operate under different influences. And they're different kinds. So you don't just look at someone and say, this one is a criminal. Is, nobody, don't for a second think you're better than them. Don't. Don't think it. You're just blessed. Helped. Should I say lucky? Some of those people go to prison. What did they do? they in the wrong place, wrong time. They got there then. It's in prison, they became bad. I'm giving illustrations. You see a lady, she, she's a prostitute. You say, what a bad girl. Are you sure? You and her grew up in different circumstances. She grew up in a circumstance better a girl than you, but with, in deep poverty. So she discovered if she sells her body, she can get some money to take care of her younger ones. She's caring for her own family members. She's not wasting the money. She's supporting her siblings and her poor mother, following big men, hustling, with the mindset that once I am established, I will never have anything to do with this. There are many like that. Many. You, you always have all you need and you have slept with multiple people. She, if she had half of what you have, she wouldn't have allowed anyone touch her. Nobody. And God sees that. He sees, he knows. He knows, he knows that this one is how she is because of her attempt to love her family. He knows that this one is how she is because she's utterly indisciplined. God sees this thing. And you sit down and you judge her. It, 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 why do you think Paul said in 1 Corinthians for judge nothing before the time? Don't judge anything before the time. You have no clue of what God will say. You don't. On the day of judgment, shocking things will happen. <coughs> Jesus was kind enough to give us a clue. And see, there are many reasons they hated Jesus. He stood up and said, it will be better for Sodom and Gomorrah. What Sodom and Gomorrah? The epitome of evil. Sodom and Gomorrah is the model of an evil city. A picture of a wicked city, intensely wicked. Like this is the worst city there could be. It was so wicked, God judged it ahead of the day of judgment. I bet, judge this one, come on. It's too bad. And he didn't send an army. I don't know if he couldn't wait. He just fire, just pull down the fire. Pack some of hell and pour on it. You didn't hear there was sulfur on it. So they packed some hell. They say, your own hell, we'll not wait till you go down into it. We'll, we'll pour it on you. Fetch hell and come. They fetch hell and pour them some of them. The they, it wasn't in the spirit realm. They brought it to the physical realm for them. Say, Una bad, bad. Your badness is takes takes first price. Wipe out these guys. That's what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the Lord Jesus comes to Judea, formerly known as Judah. But this is Greek times. Roman times, Judea, Judah, God's people, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. Jesus stands there, travels, preaching, doing miracle signs and wonders. Then one day he says, it will be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for you guys. On the day of judgment. Did you know? Did you know on judgment day, these guys will get a better deal than you get? How could you say such a thing? These guys were church people. This way, they had synagogues everywhere. They went to the temple. They offered sacrifices. They were the people of God. Holy people. And Jesus said it would be better for Sodom and Gomorrah. What kind of thing is that? Is the kind of thing I'm trying to tell you that you should stop walking around this life conceited because you will be judged according to what you've been given. 
That is the horror of Judgment Day. How much of me were you taught? How much of me did you get? How much was provided for you? Ah, did your parents provide? Okay. How much of what you needed? Ah, 50%. 50%. Awesome. 50%. Okay. So, part of what contributed to your badness was what? Trying to make up for the other 50%. Aha. Okay. Hey, you. What did your parents provide for? Oh. Ah, you had no parents. Okay. 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 Did your uncle, who took care of you? Oh, oh nobody. Oh, oh, oh wow. Mm, okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, wait this side. All the 50% people come this side first. You see, suddenly there's a challenge. You thought, because this one came out, that was an arm robber. Used to break into people's houses still. I've been known to stab someone, almost kill someone three times. Spent his life stealing. That was a thief. Then one day they caught him on the car road and burned him to death. That's how he died. Say this is guy is the guy that has been terrorizing this area, breaking into people's houses, stealing. This guy, this is a church guy now. That's a good church. No, they miss service. Jesus said it would be better for this guy than for this guy. You can go and fight Jesus. I would advise you not to. I would advise you to spend your life trying to find out his thinking. Learn how God thinks. God, like, I beg, please, don't be angry. I want to understand what kind of talk this is. Why will it be better? You've done miracles. We've seen signs and wonders. For those who don't know the story, he said, it in the cities where he had done his greatest miracles. Oh God, you don't understand. You don't understand. Doing the great miracles, is it not a sign that God is with us? Is it not a sign that we are good and chosen? Is it not a sign? The scriptures say that Jesus said, Capernaum, Bethsaida, Corazin and the cities where he did his greatest miracles. He said, Sodom and God, on, let me explain. On the day of judgment, if you know what will happen, Sodom and Gomorrah will come out like this. Capernaum will come out. <laughs> you come out crawling. Your situation will be worse. When they are flogging, for those who don't understand the of judgment, Luke chapter 12 tells you that to one will be given few strokes. This is scripture. This is not Pastor Ita's opinion. He says few strokes. One, Sodom, Abby. You, you guys are Sodom and Gomorrah, Abby. You guys. Turn. Mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. 12. Where's, where's Kapana? <laughs> yeah. Lie down there and wait for me. <laughs> Bring me a chair. <laughs> then they'll give you 42. Jesus said so. You know, some people want the passages. I don't know why I should be giving you passages. Luke chapter 12, verse 47. That servant who knows his master's will, but does not get ready. Does not get ready. You see, this is the problem. Capernaum knew Jesus' will. Bethsaida knew, like all of you sitting here know, because you're hearing it. This is, this is your undoing. This is your problem. And you can't run, because if you run now, he knows why you ran. The problem is that there are people that have never heard one over 100,000 of what you know. They've never even heard it. He told you how uh, Heidi Baker went to a slum, oh, a rubbish dump, not slum, rubbish dump, city dump, where one guy lived, you know, and went to preach to him about Jesus. First, before she even got it, the guy broke a bottle and brought her, held it to her neck like this, threatened her. 
she talked to him about Jesus and all that. When they leave, it, they, I think they gave him something. He said, oh, whoa, 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 you're coming back. C -c Come back with that Jesus. He doesn't mean spiritually. He thought Jesus is a physical human being. Because that's the first time he has ever heard the name Jesus. So by the time she talked about how good Jesus is, say, oh, yeah, you're coming. Come, come, come with Jesus too. That's a human being on your earth. While you walk around saying, every who has not heard? Psst. Don't be saying that thing. Who has not heard? Very many. I ask you, who is Confucius? Some people know about your Jesus the way you know about Confucius. How many of you know who Confucius is? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've heard the name or you know about it because I'm about to tell you to. I'll give you a mic. Don't raise your hand. I'm about to give you a chance again. You can tell me at least four sentences about Confucius. Raise your hand. If you can't, don't raise it. You see? The hand disappeared. Do you understand? Good. I am saying that there are people that know that much about Jesus on earth. They've heard the name. When I say heard, it's not that they've anyone have presented Jesus as a mm -mm. they've just said Jesus I mean, <laughs> that all till they died till the day they died all they knew about Jesus is how much you know about Confucius nothing 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 then you want the day of judgment to be the same how our God doesn't judge things like that he said to whom much is given much is expected he said the servant who knows his master's will but does not get ready or follow his instructions will be beaten with many blows it is this knowing i repeat that is on your undoing because it's that you can read abby at that time when you were eight years old you heard everyone must be born again except they will not or they will not see the kingdom abby very very you heard it you heard it you were eight years old. You heard it. What did you do after you heard it? You had the mind to stand up, walk away, and keep living. You didn't hear you not enter the kingdom of God. Now that you want to now come and die now, or you have died, where do you want to go to? Did you spend the rest of your life seeking what it means to be born again? No. Uh, well, uh, what are you about to say? He's nothing to you. So since I'm nothing to you, take that. Then the other guy doesn't know what anyone is talking about. Like, what's happening here? Why are we alive? I thought when we die, we die. Me, I thought I'll come back in karma. Me, I thought I'll have 70 virgins. What's happening here? Where Muhammad be? Muhammad. Muhammad! Sorry, sir. Angel. Uh, where Muhammad did? What did he talk now? Where? God doesn't look at and say, Shut up! <laughs> no, God looks at this person with. Now, if you've been through a beloved Bible school, you understand part of what, what, what I'm talking about. All the context for those uh, uh, typically untouched truths that we teach. You have to know it. If you are not still sure, you read Romans chapter 2. It's very clear. He tells you about the day of judgment. He tells you how God will judge people differently, directly. He says that the law will be used to judge the people of Judea. Yes? Come. Yes, you were from Judea, yes? Good. Uh, this one is from Judea. They open a completely different book. The Bible tells us in Romans 2 that these other guys, they don't open the book. They say they judge them according to the law of God written in their hearts. So they say, come up, step up, show me your heart. I just told you your Bible. Oh. Now, Bible, I see them. Is that what you've been taught? On judgment day, everybody, whether it is a lie. It's a lie. Don't tell lies. Jesus said, it will be better for these guys than for these guys. Because these guys came into what you call Christianity. 
then some of you didn't just come into general idea because they are Christians who think going to church and all that is the norm. That's all that's needed. Then there are those of you who know that there is much more. You know, you've been told. Then there are those of you that say, eh, but everybody is doing it. So there are Christians who say, there's nobody that can overcome this. They don't know more than that. They say just, well, God will show mercy. Then there are Christians that know that you can overcome it. Why? Because you've heard 2,000 people say, God help them overcome. So you know, like for everything you know, Oh, ask you, but but you heard you heard the testimonies, right? Ah, no, I know. I didn't used to come on time to hear testimonies. <laughs> I told you something the Lord, I, I believe, told me years ago. That the Lord considers as done that which ought to be done. So you missed it. It's counted for you as though you heard it. Why? Because you ought to have heard it. Oh, oh, you used to come late. <laughs> Sorry. All those, I think they gave 125 testimonies of overcoming pornography while you were in that in you. And you were supposed to be there. You missed it, so it's counted for you. You had 125 examples of victory over your bondage. You had them tell how they overcame it. You were there, you sat there, you heard it, and got up and made God a liar. It's not possible. It's not possible. That is not easy like that. That means they just like, so God. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar, that he might be justified when he judges.